afternoon, well actually it's morning, although it's a little bit dark here. I'm Gina Lofton. I'm the host of Accredited to Accredited, the actual show for all accredited investors. And I'm here today at Jekyll Island with Mr. Dave Zook. Um, I'm so excited about actually introducing everyone in the world to Dave Zook. He's an accredited investor and he owns an amazing company in Lancaster, Pennsylvania and I would love for him to talk about what he does and his journey and how he can provide more value to more people to help them build wealth. So welcome, Dave. Yeah, well, thank you, Gina. Thank you for uh, having me on your show. My story goes back to, uh, as a teenager, I've been a, an entrepreneur and an investor for as long as, almost as long as I can remember. I was, I specifically decided I wasn't going to invest in real estate and the reason for that was my dad invested in real estate but he invested in real estate in such a way that he parked his money in real estate the extra money that he made from his business he parked it in real estate and he self-managed some of his properties and I grew up with that seeing you know uh, some of those problems that he was having in real estate and I just decided you know there's got to be a better way to make money than invest in real estate so I went on my way and I uh, invested in businesses and bought some businesses and started some businesses and, and eventually got to the point where these businesses started doing really well. And I got myself into a position where I was starting to pay a lot of tax. And I remember clearly it was April the 13th for the year 2010 or 11. And I got the call from my tax guy saying after all the depreciation, after all the you know quarterly payment, quarterly tax payments you've made, you still owe a couple hundred thousand dollars in two days. Wow. So just decided right then and there. I mean I was having all kinds of fun. I was I was doing a lot of business. We were shipping buildings all over the country and and even internationally somewhat and and um, flipping a few houses and doing private money lending and just doing a lot of, a lot of untax friendly behavior and uh, it was a lot of fun but it was you know that day I, it just became not so much fun anymore wow. and when I had to give half of my earnings back to the government so I went into a deep dive and and I studied I read almost everything Robert Kiyosaki ever wrote and when he talked about um, the tax law, when he talked about how you can make millions of dollars a year and not pay any tax, it drove me crazy because I didn't know what he was talking about. I had always been taught that you make a lot of money, you got to pay a lot of tax. So I went through all that study, I realized that real estate can be a real tax shelter. And uh, that eventually drove me into the real estate space. I got chased into real estate. I didn't have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> so, I got, so I got chased into real estate and uh, that's where my real estate journey began and then it just evolved from there and uh, we have a couple thousand multifamily apartment units and, amazing and along with uh, along with investors of ours and and it's been just a quite a journey but a lot of fun well congratulations um, that is an amazing story and accomplishment in a, in a, in a very kind of short period of time so how many units total and kind of tell me a little bit and tell us a little bit about the markets and how you, you know, go about doing what you do and your investors, do you have investors? And maybe just start with some of the basics, that would be great. So we just had a closing yesterday. That is gonna get us really close to the 3,000 apartment units, um, or 3,000 units. Uh, most of those units are in Memphis. Mm -hmm. uh, we do own some multifamily in, in Texas as well. I, I was doing this for myself to the point where I was doing it so fast I ran out of my own money. Yep. And what happens to a lot of uh, real estate investors, you, 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 know, you get to the point where you either have to slow down or you gotta get creative and figure out, okay, so how can, how can I do more? Yep. I started investing in real estate probably 2010. Great looking back is perfect timing. Yep. But in, in the years following, you know, as I got to that point where you know, I was starting to run out of my own money. I just, the deals were still there and I wanted to keep, you know, growing doing deals, growing. Building, and yeah. uh, that's when I invited some friends and family and investors to come alongside of me. And, and it kind of grew organically from there. 
Amazing. So uh, about how many investors do you have today in total and, uh, you know, approximately? Roughly 100, between 100 and 125. Excellent, excellent. Now, there is a term that's used by accredited investors that we use called private placements in a syndication. And I understand that that's somewhat of what you do, right? And so can you share share with everyone how that works and how do you go about it? And, uh, you know, just the journey in a 60,000 foot level. So investing in a private placement or a syndication is simply this you leverage other people's time talents it's a safer way to invest mm -hmm. because you get to use typically you get to use leverage yep. without having to guarantee the debt oh, yeah. having to sign on a note and so what we'll do is we depending on the size of the deal you'll have mm -hmm. you know we'll put a deal together we'll get the financing we'll find a deal we'll, you know we'll do all the work to get the deal to the closing table and then we'll have you know 10 15 20 25 investors depending on the size of the deal i'll go out and find those investors and typically they are primarily investors who have done deals with me before so i'll send it out to my immediate 100 125 investors uh, i've got sort of two different databases one is database with just people who follow my work and what I do and you know get my newsletters and it's you know, like 2,000 people or something like that close to 2,000 people and then there's the smaller group of investors it's 100 to 125 people they get to see the deal first so typically 80 to 85 percent of my deals are funded by just my small, small core group. group and then I specifically carve out a piece of the deal to send out to the to the other group or people that have put their name in and say, hey, when you get a deal, I want to be in it. So I keep a list of those folks and then I try to carve out a little piece of the deal for new investors. And then once they're in that smaller group, now they see everything we do and get access to all the stuff that we do. So I, I know that this show primarily accredited investors and that's why it's called accredited to accredited. Dave, are there instances in which you allow non-accredited investors into your opportunities? And can you talk about when that is possible? Yeah, there, there, there are a few times. Typically, it's when it's a smaller deal and th there's rules. There's rules to the game. There's very specific SEC rules right. that say, look, if you allow accredited investors, you can do you know, there's a lot fewer rules. Yes. If you if you bring in non-accredited investors, then there's a lot of rules. Right. So, you know, occasionally I'll open it up to non-accredited investors just because I may have a list of, of those folks that say, hey, look, when, when you get a deal, I want to be in it. Exactly. Primarily, it's for accredited investors only. Yep. Okay. No, that was basically um, my understanding as well. And our, let's just say there's a, something that's called a self-directed IRA. Is that allowed in your specific opportunities? And if so, how does that work? I have a guy working for me full time and he helps me with investor relations and making sure the paperwork's all you know, completed and documents are all signed and all that. But his, one of his uh, jobs is working with our IRA, self-directed IRA custodian and the investor because the truth is the investor isn't running around doing his business and he's typically not 100% up to the, the rules and the right. and you know all the different things that he's even capable of doing within his self-directed IRA. Yes. So we kind of bridge that gap between the custodian and the investor and try to make that as smooth as we possibly can and, and one of the guys on my team helps with that paperwork flow and helps make that really easy for the investor. Pre you know, fills out a lot of those documents because we're doing it several times a week. The investor typically is doing it like once a year or right. once every two years and you just can't stay fluent right. when you only do it once once a year. Exactly. So we, we try to, you know, make that as smooth as we possibly can and, and help assist in it. Excellent. So um, with that, you know, how frequently does the investor get their, um, let's just say, payment is it a monthly basis, quarterly, semi-annual, and how does that work? Almost always, it's a it's a quarterly distribution setup. Okay. I've I've done it monthly, 
Uh, it depends. It also depends on what deal it's in. I know. So we, we have a big ATM portfolio, and that's that's on a monthly distribution schedule. But typically in our real estate deals, it's it's quarterly. So what can we talk about the types of returns that investors um, kind of can expect to receive? And I'm sure that it varies, but at least maybe a, a range by type of asset. Um, I, you, I understand you have real estate and you have ATMs now, mm-hmm. so can you give us a little bit of color around those different asset classes and the types of returns? We are always striving to be in the double digits. Wow. The real estate multifamily apartments, as you know, has gotten really competitive and it's harder than it was back in 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it keeps getting harder. You know, you got a lot of institutional money chasing that space and it's been one of the most popular asset classes coming out of the Great Recession. Yep. So, you know, we've seen our, you know, it's a question we ask ourselves, how low do we go? Yeah. You know, and, you know, back in 2012, 13, 14, it was easy to hit the double digit mark. We've had to accept a little smaller spread. Yeah. We're now seeing properties, I mean, typically if we can't hit the seven to nine percent range, if we can't fit in that window, we don't do the deal. Yeah. We like to return seven to nine percent to mm-hmm. our investors in a real estate deal. ATMs is a little different, it was totally different than real estate. Talking 24.9 percent cash on cash re- return. Wow. But it's totally different. I mean, yep. you, you know, at the end of the seven year contract, mm-hmm. you don't have much of an asset. Mm-hmm. So the internal rate of return, though, is very similar to real estate. Mm-hmm. And it's also the infinite return is somewhat similar to real estate where, you know, you, if you're a heavy taxpayer, you get all of your cash back in the first three years. Yeah. And then you ride out the last four years on free cash flow. Yeah. But at the end of, you know, you're dealing with technology. At the end of the seven year term, you, your, your value of that asset is down to almost nothing. So it's just different, but even even there, your internal rate of your your internal rate of return, you're counting the cash flow, you're counting the tax benefits and the loss of value of your machine. You're still at fifteen and a half percent. Oh yeah, I mean, that you're in the bank today, you're getting what one percent if you're lucky. Um, so and that's why you have your you know your, your name of your company is Real Asset Investor. So these are real assets yeah. that you are investing in. Well, it's, we had a we had a local community bank close to my place, they did a raise. They raised $48 million in a matter of, whatever, two weeks, around two, three weeks. Mm-hmm. And they were paying out, I don't know, like 1.2% or something like that. I mean, it's crazy. So yeah, I mean, the, 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 the search for yield, yes. I mean, there's, there's a lot of money out there looking for a responsible syndicator or a, a responsible sponsor mm-hmm. that, uh, that you know, they can feel comfortable with that uh, that'll place their money and they'll get great value and, and a great return. Excellent. No, that's wonderful. So um, what are your uh, kind of growth projections and how um, how do you see the, the future for for real asset investor and for Dave Zook? There will always be an asset there will always be an asset class that will make sense. And we're not, we're not married to the apartment space. We'll do apartments till they don't make, you know, till, till you can't find deals that make sense anymore. And, you know, the temptation to do a deal just because there's money there and your investors are begging you to put their money to work, you know, you just gotta fight that. And you just gotta say, hey, look, you know, we, we decided early on that, you know, we may only have a, three, four year window yep. to get this done. And so we're not gonna we're not gonna keep doing apartment deals when the numbers stop working. The numbers stop working, we'll we'll stop and we'll move to another asset class. There's always gonna be an asset class that has good value, returns good cash flow. Yep. Or at least I hope. You know, but but from what I've seen, I mean there's bull and bear market cycles and there's always gonna be an asset class that makes sense while another asset class may not. Excellent. So if any of the audience can um, find out more about Real Asset Investor, is there some way to go about doing that and how, how, how could one? Sure. So um, info at therealassetinvestor.com is the best way to reach us. You, you'll reach my team. I 
either myself or my team responds to every email that comes in. Mm -hmm. And when you email in and ask uh, any kind of question, uh, you automatically get uh, enrolled in our database. And now you'll see our monthly newsletters. You'll see uh, maybe some deal flow that comes through occasionally or something like that. And, and, uh, but it, that's, that's the best way to reach us. Info at therealassetinvestor.com. Wonderful. Well, we are going to cut it short. Um, I want to actually ask Dave maybe if I could interview him again because um, he has a wealth of information. And I think we just scratched the surface, but I do want to thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, your capabilities as an operator with the audience because, like you said, finding an amazing operator to be responsible for one's money, that is the most important thing is respecting an investor's money because they worked hard for it. And I want to thank you for ensuring the, the integrity of this business. It is a big responsibility and it's, a, it's, it's one that we take very seriously. Uh, you know, you're dealing with people's livelihood. You're dealing with, uh, you know, their retirement maybe. Yeah. Or, you know, who knows what that is, but it is a big responsibility and we take it seriously. So thanks for having me on your show. Thank you, Dave.